Hey there, new parents. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's often overlooked but so important for postpartum moms. What to expect from your body, especially your vaginin after giving birth. So grab a cozy blanket and let's get started. Becoming a mother, a process sociologists refer to as matrescence, is one of the most monumental transformations in a person's life. Being pregnant and delivering babies may be the greatest physical achievement of your life, far greater than any road race you've ever run. Whether you deliver your baby vaginally or from your belly, that means a caesarine or C-section delivery. After giving birth, it's normal for your body, including your vagina, to undergo significant changes. Here's what you can expect. First up, let's talk about vaginal tears. Did you know? Around 53 to 79% of women experience some degree of tearing during vaginal delivery, according to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. It's totally normal, but it can feel overwhelming. From minor first-degree tears to more severe fourth-degree tears, your body is on a healing journey. Minor tears, which involves a tear in the skin between your vagina and rectum, and the tissue right below it, you might need a few stitches or you might not. It's worth noting though, that the vaginal area has a big blood supply, which means that for more minor tears, healing is usually fairly speedy, such as few weeks and linear without extensive medical intervention. But stitches may be needed for second to fourth degree tears, which involves the skin and muscle of the perineum, the space between the vaginal opening and anus. These stitches usually dissolve within a few weeks. You might also notice some staining from your tear when you pee, but fear not. Your body is incredible at healing itself, and with a little time and patience, you'll be feeling like yourself again. And remember, your healthcare provider is there to support you every step of the way. Next, the urinary issues. As the initial challenges peeing might feel weird. During pregnancy, your uterus grows tremendously in size shifting around other internal organs, such as your bladder and your intestines. After you deliver, your uterus begins to shrink and everything starts to move back into its place. That's part of the reason why, the first time you go to the bathroom after having a baby, you might feel a difficulty in urinating or controlling urine flow. Being swollen or cut down there can also impact your ability to pee. Usually, these tinkle troubles resolve within hours as your body relearns how to urinate. And over the following weeks and months, your pelvic muscles will likely get stronger again, ideally helping with any incontinence issues. Remember that there's no wiping in those early postpartum days. Most perinatal health experts recommend the use of a peri bottle with lukewarm water to avoid irritation. Next up, you might not get your period. Exclusive breastfeeding can delay the return of menstruation due to prolactin levels suppressing ovulation. But periods may return once breastfeeding patterns change, although timing varies among individuals. Some exclusively breastfeeding moms notice their periods return once their baby starts eating solid foods or stops feeding at night, while others don't see it return until they fully wean. Obstetricians and gynecologists are quick to note, though, that while most women who breastfeed exclusively won't ovulate, breastfeeding isn't a foolproof form of birth control. Instead, you can chat with your doctor about alternative methods of contraception, such as an IUD or the pill. For the first three weeks after giving birth, however, you should avoid using any birth control that has estrogen. Next up, let's chat about postpartum bleeding or lochia, body's way of shedding the placenta and other pregnancy-related tissues. The placenta is the organ your body grows to support your growing baby and other tissues supply the fetus with oxygen and nutrients to develop. Bleeding typically transitions from bright red to dark brown to light yellow or white before stopping completely. Just remember to keep an eye out for any excessive bleeding as this could indicate that there's still some placenta in your uterus or possibly even an infection if bleeding is accompanied by fever or foul-smelling discharge. So don't hesitate to reach out to your doctor if something doesn't feel right. Now let's talk about resuming sexual activity after childbirth. Your body needs time to heal. So generally, 
Healthcare providers recommend to wait at least six weeks before getting intimate again. It decreases the risk of infection down there, as it is a part of the reason why healthcare professionals advise against using tampons or menstrual cups in those early postpartum weeks, which could up the likelihood of an infection. Don't feel ready for it at six weeks? You're definitely not alone. Readiness varies among individuals as it is influenced by physical healing, lack of sleep, mood, and breastfeeding. After having a baby, intimacy can feel different for some people for a variety of reasons. Due to the birthing process, your vagina and vulva may have changed slightly. Other parts of your body, like breasts and belly, may have changed too, which can play a role in how you feel during lovemaking. If you're breastfeeding, your breasts may feel full or uncomfortable at times. You could feel touched out due to breastfeeding, holding, changing, and having a baby on you all day. Or you may have insecurities about the way you feel or look. And also there may be changes in sensation as pregnancy and childbirth can weaken pelvic floor muscles, leading to issues like incontinence or pain during intimacy, requiring adjustment and patience. That's completely normal. Pelvic floor physical therapy can address these issues and provide strategies for strengthening and pain relief. So listen to your body and only do what feels right for you. And finally, breastfeeding and vaginal dryness. Breastfeeding can lead to decreased estrogen levels as producing prolactin, which might cause some dryness down there. But don't worry, there are plenty of solutions available. If you're experiencing dryness, talk to your doctor. Prescription vaginal estrogen creams can treat symptoms of low estrogen. If issues such as dryness are bothering you, using a good lubricant can help too. But if you're experiencing pain, talk to your obstetrician and get a colleagueist or a pelvic floor physical therapist about potential strategies for pain relief. People often talk about feeling more stretched out after having a baby, the pelvic floor, the hammock of muscles in your pelvis that sit like a bowl and surround the urethra, vagina, and anus, help stop and start the flow of urine, the passage of gas and bowel movements, and they help hold our pelvic organs in your body. During a vaginal delivery, your baby pushes through these muscles and the muscles may stretch up to three times their normal length. This can lead to pain, leaking pee, urinary urgency, and frequency, gas leaking or leaking poo. Sometimes though, the opposite is true and the trauma of the experience can leave some folks with excessive tension in the muscles and this creates pain with intercourse. It's so important to be able to both close and lift the muscles and fully lengthen and release the muscles. Pelvic floor physical therapists treat many of the issues you might think you just have to live with postpartum. If you have pubic bone pain, tailbone pain, back pain, pain with intimacy, or leaking pee or poo with a cough, laugh, or sneeze, or have a lingering separation of your abdominal muscles called diastasis recti, consider seeing a pelvic floor physical therapist. So there you have it, folks. Postpartum recovery is a journey filled with ups and downs, but with the right support and knowledge, you'll come out stronger on the other side. Postpartum examination, which is usually done within three weeks for vaginal deliveries and eight weeks for C-sections may give you a help for this journey. Normally, healthcare providers check for uterine size, cervical status, perennial healing, potential scar tissue from tears or C-section incisions, and mood assessment during postpartum examination. By understanding these postpartum changes and seeking appropriate care, new moms can navigate the physical transformations that accompany childbirth with confidence and support. Remember, you're not alone in this, and there's a whole community of moms cheering you on. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.